वेलकम गाइस दिस इज द न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस ऑफ 18 जुलाई 2023 लेट्स स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन द फर्स्ट आर्टिकल इज अबाउट दिल्ली डिस्प्यूट रिसेंटली द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट हैज पास्ड एन ऑर्डिनेंस एंड दैट ऑर्डिनेंस हैज बीन कंटेस्टेड इन सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज डिसाइडेड टू रेफर दिस केस टू द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बेंच एंड दिस इज द हेडलाइन ऑफ दिस न्यूज़ एंड लेट मी गिव यू गाइस uh the background analysis of what exactly this news is there was a tussle between central government and the uh, delhi government regarding appointment and the transfers of civil servants in the delhi region that issue went into the court of law and the delhi court has passed an uh, order in favor of arvind kejriwal government that uh, state government has control over the appointment and the transfers of civil servants and this uh, power has been constituted to state government under the article of 239 aa but immediately after this uh, order from the high court of delhi the central government has passed a ordinance where the power of appointment and the transfer of these civil servants has been given to the lieutenant governor in turn the central government has more power when it comes to handling civil servants in the delhi region then mr arvind kejriwal government it has gone to supreme court against this ordinance and supreme court has referred this case to constitutional bench uh, this is it about the article since there is a mention of constitution bench let me guy let me give you guys brief introduction regarding a uh, constitution bench uh, it is a bench of uh, supreme court which has five or more judges usually we have a division bench and we have a constitutional bench and this constitutional bench it deals with the cases which are related to issues of constitution of india and this is not a permanent bench but recently supreme court has expressed its opinion that uh, supreme court of india we need permanent constitutional uh, bench to handle these kind of issues and under article uh, 1 Uh, 45 there is a mention that in any case involving substantial question of law as uh, to the interpretation of constitution that must be divided by a bench of at least 5 judges such bench is called constitution bench let's move to the next article in the next article there is a mention that emuna uh, the water level has raised again to a 206 mark the warning mark is 205 uh, meters and now it has crossed that again there will be a flood like situation in uh, yamuna bank so this you have to see this uh, from uh, two perspective as i mentioned even in the uh, before videos as well one is uh, the disaster management perspective that how do you manage and how do you mitigate and what measures you take uh, to handle this kind of situation and the second aspect is ethics as a case study take this as a case study and being an administrator how do you perceive this situation and how do what are the short term measures you take and what are the long term plans you take to handle this kind of uh, flash floods or a uh, urban flood kind of situation in your area let's move on to the next article uh, there is an uh, article regarding russia has halted uh, ukraine grain deal Uh, there is another article in international section as well i will cover this particular topic uh, in the international uh, page the next article this is important from prelims perspective usually even the direct question as regarding uh, this index is released by which authority or which organization here the article talks about uh, niti ayog has released an index that is national multi dimensional poverty index from prelims perspective you have to remember that uh, which authority releases it this multi dimensional poverty index at the national level is released by niti ayog and at the international level multi dimensional poverty index is released by undp this distinct distinction you have to remember here and there are data here you can use in your uh, mains answers uh, the easier one would be that uh, nearly 13.5 crore people came out of multi dimensional poverty in, uh, during the period of uh, uh, 2015 to 2021 this data you can use and there is even percentage they have mentioned percentage as well 
Now, from 24 percentage, the multi-dimensional poverty in 2015 that has been reduced to 14.96, that is 15 percent in 2021. This is also you can use it in your answers. Let's see what is multi-dimensional uh, poverty. Poverty is usually a person is failing to afford uh, some entities or some commodity due to the uh, lack of income or low income low uh, money this is the basic idea of poverty but multi dimension dimensional poverty is the idea of unaffordability or not affording in various aspects like health sector sanitation food and nutrition when these aspects when a person fail unaffordability in these aspects th those things will be considered as a multi-dimensional poverty let's start the discussion on editorials the first editorial is about ucc and in this article uh, the author takes a pro ucc stand and he says how important ucc is for a uh, women perspective for women empowerment perspective and also for the lgbt perspective from these two point of view this article has been written there are some points which are uh, very good and you can use those in your answers as well before getting to the discussion of this editorial let me give you guys brief introduction regarding what exactly the ucc is the basic introduction of this topic ucc the uniform civil code is one law for all the communities especially regarding personal issues personal matters like marriage divorce inheritance and adoption the article 44 of indian constitution that is directory directive principles of state policies also states that a state should endeavor to secure ucc for all the citizens so it has been mentioned in the constitution of india and courts time and again in their judgment have told that it is a the india should go for implementation of ucc throughout the country and one among the judgment which is very crucial in this aspect is shabano case of 1985 and let's see what are the significance and why do we need ucc in our country as the name indicates it promotes uni uniform principles around the country everybody will be following same principle when it comes to personal laws and it promotes the secularism in the country because the separate uh, laws for religion based activities that the religion these religion sa sanctioned activities is detrimental uh, as a we live in a one country and having different law in one country so it is not it is not considered as a good move so this will promote uh, having ucc will promote secularism in the country and also it gives protection to vulnerable and women's rights because uh, due to personal law due to the uh, various tradition and customs there are these laws uh, these personal laws have been very detrimental for women empowerment so this law will give protection to vulnerable and those women who needs state support when it comes to their personal rights and this reduces the discord since we have a different laws for different communities this always creates some division between the community so ucc is going to reduce that discord and also it prevents religion based discrimination that is prevailing in the country and it is going to and unjust customs and traditions the you know century old customs are still practiced in our country so various uh, steps have been taken to remove this when it comes to the untouchability or a caste caste system there are measures taken by uh, by the lawmakers so ucc is required on the whole uh, to implement the same kind of uh, uh, level playing field for other uh, belief systems as well and uh, it removes vote bank policy since everybody will be following single law it is going to affect that vote bank policies and it eases administration on the whole and it, it india will be on the on par with global practices of uh, uh, uniform civil code and there are and it leads to national integration as well and there are few challenges to it it violates the fundamental rights uh, in article 25 gives freedom of religion and implementing ucc goes against the idea of uh, freedom of religion that has been given under the constitution of india and this is going to uh, affect the diversity india is known for its diversity and we have uh, different flavors in our lives 
uh, when it comes to the personal laws and this is going to affect that uh, diversity and it is going to reduce that diversity and it may lead to communi communal politics you might think that this is this has been targeted for the, for particular community so it it may lead to communal politics uh, as a knee jerk reaction and it is a threat to multiculturalism and even political will is extremely important it is one among the challenges that that uh, uh, to implement ucc need, you need that political will the 22nd law commission has favored the implementation of ucc in the country and it asked for the public opinion on this uh, issue uh, let's see at the history from where this idea and the distinguishing has started during the british rule they created this personal law on religion basis muslims had a separate law hindus had a separate law and the anglo indians christian they had a separate law this has a legacy of a british colonial period and their strategy was to divide and rule they used to keep the distinguishing in the society so that uh, it will be easier for them to rule and if you look at this personal law these are more patriarchal in nature if you see that hindu law the head of the family is always a man and you hardly seen matrilineal, matrilineal uh, uh, setup in the country and for a, if you look at the muslim personal laws the muslim diversity women it is difficult for her to get inheritance uh, from the family and if you look at the parsi culture where if a parsi woman marries someone outside their community she will be removed from that uh, uh, community the group of uh, parsi community so these personal laws are extremely patriar patriarchal and these need to be addressed actually and we have to see uh, ucc through the lens of uh, women empowerment and uh, from the point of view of lgbt we continued uh, this personal law and we still have that colonial mindset and still we could not could not able to get rid of this and the main culprit here is personal laws and we are one country and following different personal laws it goes against the ethos of our constitution this goes against the principle of our democracy and this has to be changed and that change will lead to good and that change will lead to the unification on a longer run but what opposition parties are doing here they are suppose supporting personal laws and they are stating diversity you know diversity is one of the one among the core features of our country and if you take away this personal law it is going to affect the diversity of our country but the thing is the diversity the concept of diversity should not support unequal rights for men and women diversity should always make sure that there should be a level playing field for both the genders but here somewhere this is lacking in our country and if you look at uh, uh, hindu society the law lawmakers they did not support caste system in the name of diversity even there is a concept of untouchability proper steps have been taken to remove all these social evil from the society the same thing is required even for personal laws as well and we should not equate religion to the diversity uh, just for the implementation of uh, ucc or just to oppose the ucc those are two different concepts diversity is different and the religion is different even uh, ambedkar he was very vocal and he was very much against the use of religions for political arrangement many of them think that a uniform, uniform civil code it should go along with personal laws of religion it should support it should go hand in hand there should be a congruence between this code and the religion but the thing is it does not matter ucc you cannot equate ucc with a religion the you should equate ucc with democratic principle it must be in accord with the democratic principles of our country and government should draft ucc without referring to any religious practices it should be beyond all these things the core focus should be the constitutional provisions the core uh, uh, aspect should be the democratic principle not the it, it should not focus on religious perspective at all 
now religious leaders are there giving statement that we are opposing it this is going to affect our uh, uh, customs and traditions but the thing here is these religious re leaders they cannot dictate in the name of freedom of religion constitute ha constitution has given the freedom of religion that does not mean that that freedom should go against the uh, core principles of constitution itself and you cannot uh, stand in front of this idea accept one idea of the constitution and negate another idea of constitution that hypocrisy is not going to be accepted in this democratic setup and uh, if you look at various aspect wherever there is a religious uh, uh, incongruence with this constitutional aspect court has taken a stand especially if you look at uh, shabrimala case where women were not allowed to enter into the temple premises uh, for some reason but court has taken this issue and it has passed the judgment this is against the democratic ethos of our country so and this has been accepted even government has accepted and even though there are dissatisfaction in some part of uh, part of the society but on the whole people accepted government order the court interference in shabrimala issue it shows that personal laws are not immune to the uh, constitutional values the main discussion here it should be right to religion versus women autonomy rather than right to religion bit uh, right of religion between other uh, communities it it always should women empowerment and women ability to take her own decision that should be the primary concerns whenever you uh, government plan to implement ucc it is right of women in every religious group it is not restricted to either hindu group muslim group or christian group it is right of women in every religion group and this ucc should make them more stronger should empower these women in every religious group and there should be the equal beneficiaries of indian democracy that should be the primary concern of ucc and this uh, ucc is extremely important to reform the personal laws to end gender discrimination and it is extremely important to balance uh, between their women rights and women responsibilities and, and you know let, we talked about uh, wh how the women are facing what are the issues women facing and with ucc how can you help uh, this uh, to remove this uh, gender discrimination from the society let's see it from a lgbt uh, perspective and author talks about uh, it should be used as bridging gap for lgbt community in the country we don't have a strong laws which favor this community in the country they are still extremely minuscule minorities and their interest have to be protected and whatever their irrespective of faith gender sexual orientation ucc should cater to uh, equalize that uh, uh, rights and responsibilities in the society especially people who are very vulnerable and who are prone to exploitation in the society and proper implementation and proper rules of ucc is going to help lgbt community when it comes to the civil partnership or inheritance or adoption related issues uh, in the very minuscule minority community of lgbt and author conclude this article by saying that don't confine the entire discussion of ucc from hindu muslim uh, uh, that binary concept it is beyond that it is beyond religion it is beyond all these prejudices we have in the country that ucc it should create social ec social economical and political institution and it should ensure justice to every man and woman and this is what this article talks about there are uh, some good points in there then you can use uh, the one perspective uh, women empowerment you make you use of ucc for U women empowerment and use of ucc for lgbt community and also you can write uh, that U ucc can be used for upliftment of minority as well by removing tradition and customs uh, which are detrimental for their development on the whole uh, not only for minority even for uh, entire section of the population wherever there are discrimination is uh, situated so you can use these points in your answers even the conclusion is also fine that don't see ucc as a binary of hindu muslim uh, issue rather than see it as a uh, as a code to uh, develop an institution that ensures justice to both women and uh, men in the society and this is it about this article let's move on to the next editorial 
the next editorial is about uh, india uae relationships and it talks about uh, recently there was an agreement regarding rupee dirham settlement system and this editorial talks about what are the risks and what are the benefits that are involved in this particular settlement system uh, let's get into the discussion recently prime minister modi made a one day visit to uae and at that time both the central banks of the country that is rbi of india and central bank of uh, united uh, arab emirates they have signed an agreement regarding rupee uh, dirham for cross border transaction that using rupee and dirham for settlement process as well before that we were actively uh, doing trade with the dollar as a reserve currency now that Uh, dollar the position of the dollar will be replaced by rupee and dirham that domestic currencies will be used for the cross border transactions and the reason to do this is to reduce the dependency on uh, other currencies especially dollars and here the settlement will be uh, mainly focusing on two aspects one is all the current account payment it will be done in rupee dirham uh, transactions and certain capital account transaction here you have to focus there is not uh, no permission have been given to complete uh, capital account transaction there are some restriction when it comes to capital account transactions but current account transaction yes completely it is open for rupee dirham trade and there are two aspect in that uh, uh the trading system uh, especially for rupee dirham trading system one is local currency settlement system this is one aspect and the second aspect is interlinking interlinking of the their payment and messaging system these two uh, plays very important role to make this effective and efficient on a longer run and by doing this it is going to develop rupee and dirham uh, it is going to strengthen in the foreign exchange market and even the volatility of uh, whether it's a dollar or any other currency like uh, a euro even that can be avoided by using domestic currencies of uh, two countries and also the pricing of uh, Uh, indian rupee and dirham it this will be independent of any reserve currency any foreign currencies now the pricing of currency will be independent of dollar it will be independent of euro on the whole uh, and it is going to improve the ease of doing business and it is going to boost the trade of especially for india and as soon as that indian currency takes that value in the international market it is going to improve our uh, ease of doing business and it is going to improve the trade relations as well on the whole and also if you look at it this is considered as a first step for the in internationalization of rupee and also this is actively going to affect the process of de dollarization in the world market to make this successful it is very much necessary especially the business houses of both the countries they have to adopt uh, domestic uh, currencies in their operations then only this will be successful in a longer run or else it will be a one move by heads of the two governments and it is going to be in a back track for very long time so uh, adoption of a uh, business uh, of both the nations using the domestic currency is very crucial for the success of uh, this particular settlement system and if you look at it uh, uae has a trade surplus we have almost 85 billion dollar worth of trade we do in every year out of that india uh, imports uh, 50 uh, billion dollars and it exports around 35 billion dollars so uae has that extra trade plus and extra billion uh, dollars of rupees in their uh, wallet so we should find new avenues to develop sorry to deploy these extra rupees uh, so that there will not be any uh, accumulation of rupees on the whole uh, it is going to be detrimental for the entire process see this is what happened in russia both the countries decided to 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 trade uh, in uh, domestic currencies especially after us sanctions were held on uh, russia but what happens uh, india was importing a lot of russian oil and it was paying in indian rupees and these billions of rupees were accumulated in russian bank and there were no way russia could able to uh, to dissipate that extra rupees and russia and uh, it, india they then uh, 
stick on to a chinese yuan for the trade this should not happen between india and uae proper care has to be taken and proper avenues to deploy that extra rupees has to be considered you know uh, there are two suggestions this uh, author gives here in this article one thing is investment by uae uh, firms in india the extra surplus amount whatever the uae has in its wallet they can use that extra amount to invest in our country so this will be the one option another option will be to make uae as a currency entry point it means that indian business indian business organizations can use uae dirhams to uh, for the uh, transaction with third country as well as of now it is only bilateral there are no decisions have been taken for multilateral but on the long run on the whole if there is a surplus state with one country then these kind of arrangements could be done to ease out the differences between uh, currencies uh, dissipation in the country and at the end uh, uh, the author gives one suggestion that there should not be any sudden changes in policies especially in india we had demonetization and recalling of 2000 rupee note these kind of things you is that shows uh, that gives very low confidence on the currency market in the world so these kind of policies should be avoided there should not be any sudden changes in the policies in our country neither for uae as well so that both the countries can use this opportunity to make their currency very efficient in international market let's go to the next article the next article is about data protection bill and uh, this editorial the author talks about how this data protection bill has uh, affected one of the sections of uh, inform rti act right to information act of 2005 that one single point has been very extremely elaborated i'll just give you the gist that is more sufficient to understand this uh, article and you just need to understand the concept i don't think there will be any direct questions but this concept you have to be aware of and i'll uh, talk about this uh, data protection bill in detail i've given details before uh, few days before as well i'll talk about this bill again it will it will be in news uh, for months actually so whenever there will be detailed discussion on this i'll give the various features and all these aspect of uh, data protection bill uh, cabinet has approved data protection bill recently but this bill is going to affect some of the features of uh, rti act in rti act there are 10 categories where information has been accept, uh, exempted from disclosure especially the uh, section 8 uh, where uh, you know subclass 1 where a to j you don't have to remember all these things but you just know that uh, section 8 is the contentious issue here now from a to j there are 10 categories where information can be withheld by the information officer if any information is as and which re, which is related to personal information and there is no uh, nowhere it is related to public activity those kind of information government is not supposed to give and the information officer has a right to uh, stop giving this information and he can control the flow of information and what have what is happening in our country is many a time this has been misused so many times and many information have been withheld stating that this is this belongs to a personal information of a person so this information cannot be diverted so this has been uh, very a time this has been happened in our country and it has been used to cover corrupt and illegal activities of government officials as well but uh, how is it related to this data protection bill let's see that there is a provision in data protection bill which is amending this section uh, section 8 actually and here what what is happening is it, this amendment is making this uh, uh, exemption very stronger here initially it was there was only regarding uh, private information about any individual it was related to individual person only now the ambit of that uh, detailed uh, definition of person has been extended now the person include companies as well organization as well individuals as well now the data can be withhold saying that even the anything related to companies organizations individuals so it gives more power to these information officers to withheld the information and it would be 
it would it is like giving a legal authority to deny information and author says that it been 15 years and no personal image has been dented or the national interest has been hampered by using rti by making this kind of amendment and changes you are intentionally making uh, a right to information act very stricter so that uh, corrupt uh, activities can undergo and people will be devoid of taking information out of it this is what this article talks about let's move on to the next article uh, there is one editorial where it has been mentioned the wimbled regarding wimbledon 2023 where the 20 year old carlos alcaraz has uh, won the title so this is it about uh, this uh, editorial talks about entire details it gives all the details regarding who were uh, winners before and all these details this is not important from exam perspective but there are questions this time there were two questions regarding sports so don't ignore it uh, go through with it this is not important this is this is not very difficult to understand as well uh, just have a one read once so but basic information the piece of information is uh, wimbledon 2023 is won by a very young personality 20 year old carlos alcaraz let's move on to the next editorial the next article is about uh, wto this article talks about both india and usa they have solved some of the disputes between them and which were in wto appellate body before getting to the article let me give you guys brief introduction regarding wto wto is the only global organization which deals with the rules of trade between nations it is it has been constitution uh, constituted in 1995 under marrakesh agreement before wto we had gad that is general agreement on tariff and trade and that has been constituted in 1948 and there are 164 members and it covers almost 98% of global trade and global D- gdp you can understand how uh, extremely crucial the wto is for uh, trade activities around the world and it makes sure that uh, uh, lower trade barriers uh, through the negotiation it makes sure that there is no discrimination when it comes to trade activities between the country and let's see the importance of a wto it mainly supports non discrimination in the trade practices and it supports the recipro- reciprocity if there is uh, some uh, bargaining or some discounts have been given from one country and other co- uh, wto supports another country also to reciprocate with the same value so that uh, ease of trade is going to sustain in the market and uh, it enforces uh, it has binding and co- enforcement commitments and that is also very important for uh, easy flow of trade and uh, commodities and it it is based on the principle of transparency and even it uh, consider safety valves when values uh, in the trade aspect as well the highest authority of wto is ministerial conference and it meets uh, at least every two year once and uh, the daily work is handled by three bodies the one is uh, the, the general council the dispute uh, dispute settlement body and this article is about this uh, dis- uh, dispute uh, settlement body and trade policy and review body let's get into the article prime minister modi visited usa recently he had a two day visit and the visit has been celebrated in both the countries and during in the context of that visit both the countries have solved or end the six trade disputes which were is Uh, which were contested in uh, wto usually in wto first it goes to dispute dispute settlement system if the order given by dispute settlement system it can be uh, appealed in the appellate body of wto and but the thing is since 2019 both the dispute settlement system and the appellate body have been dysfunctional due to us sorry due to united states of america's opposition for its appointment somewhere us used to tell that it is going to uh, affect their trade system and it is in favor of other country rather than usa so usa voice uh, usa voice deferring the appointment of members to this appellate body even though appellate body is not functioning still both the countries were able to solve these issues it is an achievement for both the countries as well and this article mentions about uh, 
primarily three issues that were going on between India and USA in WTO. The first one was uh, the, under the National Solar Mission, the government of India has told that certain amount of certain percentage of domestic content is required for the implementation. And this uh, provision was questioned by USA and this was uh, contested under WTO and there was an amicable situation, amicable uh, uh, negotiation has been done under this issue and this problem has been solved. And the second issue was export oriented schemes like uh, in India export subsidy incentives have been given uh, for uh, so many items and this has been again questioned by USA by doing by giving subsidies it is going to distort the world. Uh, trade in world market and USA was against this uh, subsidy given by Indian government saying that this is going to affect the trade inside USA as well and India has considered this India has made some changes in uh, domestic laws so that it is not going to affect the interest of USA so it is uh, mutual reciprocity you can see uh, both the countries have agreed to act upon interest of each other and the third issue was there was additional duty was put by USA on imports made by uh, uh, Indian steel and aluminium. There were a, a percentage has been increased additional duty has been put on Indian steel and aluminium by the especially it was being supported by Indian Indel industrialists especially the who belong to this steel and aluminium industry. They thought that Indian steel and aluminium is going to enter the US market and it is going to distort the trade there. For all these actions there were retaliatory me measures from both the countries even USA took retaliatory measures and even India took retaliatory measures. So it was difficult for both the countries to have that free trade free flow of uh, goods and services between the countries. Now things have been sorted out and all the all these six aspects belong to six different sectors. So ironing out the uh, uh, issues between them it shows that uh, both the countries have matured they have showed the matured way to handle the consequences and they have both the find mutually agreed solution to it and they both have accepted each other's domestic challenges India has its own domestic challenges and USA has its own domestic challenges both of them are sensitive enough to understand the domestic challenges Some, somewhere it shows that respect and for the a trade aspect in both the countries and this sets as a template for other WTO members as well and other members who have these kind of issues they can sort it out on the same lines what USA and India followed in WTO. Let's move on to the next article. USA has handed over 105 antiquities to India the following an agreement. This you can give it as an example for your ethics paper where country has been voluntarily uh, giving the antiquities that have been acquired for from another country this shows that mutual trust and respect for other country this is extremely important to have that ha harmony in geopolitics so use this as an example in your ethics uh, gs4 paper union home minister amit shah has been told uh, that a new drone policy will be implemented in the country. These drones have been used for cross-border drug trafficking. So proper steps have to be taken and he has mentioned that there will be new drone policy which, which will address this particular issue. Uh, I think that would be sufficient for this topic. Let's move on to the next article. The next article is about grain deal that happened between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, let's talk about it. Ukraine is one among the top producers of wheat and Ukraine used to export uh, a lot of wheat to different countries especially Middle East and the North African countries. So after altercations between Russia and Ukraine, Russia was very uh, crucial and it took uh, steps against the import uh, anything is going out of Russia in that Black Sea region. In that process it restricted the trade of uh, food grains as well. So this was this this made very tough situation for Middle East and the North African countries and also on the whole in the international market the uh, food grain price have increased due to this. So there was a deal brokered between uh, Russia uh, with the help of UN and Turkey for the movement of food grains and that deal is a Black Sea food, uh, food grain deal. 
According to that deal, Russia agreed for the movement of food grains from Ukraine to other part of the world crossing Black Sea. But later on, Russia and this agreement was only for few months and some extensions have been given. Few days ago, Turkey said that Russia has agreed for extension, furthermore extension of this deal. But today there is a news that uh, Russia has taken a stand against it and it is not going to extend this deal on the background of there was an attack from uh, Ukraine on Russia. There was some drone attacks. So strict actions have been taken from Russian side to halt this deal. And this is going to have a huge ramification on food grains distribution around the world. India is already facing inflation when it comes to vegetables. If the inflation happens even in the food grains, it will be extremely detrimental for our economic development of uh, especially India and others, so uh, South Asian countries as well. Let me show you guys in the map. Uh, this is the Black Sea region and this is the shipping route of uh, food grain and only food grain was allowed under the grain deal and this was been brokered by Turkey and United Nations organization and Crimea this has been occupied by Russia uh, initially it was under the control of Ukraine later uh, Russia took over the control of Crimea since Crimea is under the control of uh, Russia it can directly affect the movement of cargoes in the Black Sea region. Uh, this is it about this article. This is it for the day guys. Thank you for listening. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good time.